In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make this very painterly style effect to your objects in Blender that acts as a single modifier that you can apply to any object in your scene and it also responds to light information very well so you can light this in a very natural way, works in both EV and cycles and we also have the ability to sample the UV map of our underlying object to transfer across texture information and that kind of thing too as you can see here and the best part about it is it's, it's actually very simple to set up but it offers a fair bit of control. So to start with, I, um, I was looking into methods that had been existing before for this kind of thing, and I was inspired a lot by Project Gold. The only problem with it was its painterly setup no tree look like this, which was a bit too complicated for me, and I wanted to find a simpler version for just basic asset painterly stuff. Though that one does have some cool features like being able to guide the strokes using curves and other, other controls like that. Um, but yeah, for this, we have a much simpler node tree and I thought it would be cool to show you that. So the first step for me was to source some brush stroke textures to actually put across this um, these objects. And I ended up just painting my own because I wanted a bit more control over them. And I couldn't really create these uh, effects digitally that well. So I ended up just making some brush strokes from black acrylic paint and taking some pictures and reading those into Blender. And I'll provide you with one of those images in the description that you can use to try out this effect. If you want to download the full node group, you can of course grab that too from the description and just start adding this to your scenes. So let's get started in a new file here. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in my uh, brushstroke textures that I painted. So I'm going to go shift a image mesh plane, and then I'm going to grab that one of those pictures I took of my brushstrokes. And I've got that in here now. So I took these with a high-res camera, so we, we have a lot of detail in the strokes here, and it will, it will hold up close up. Uh, so let's go ahead and start separating these out into individual strokes. So in edit mode, I'm just control R to add loops. I'm just sort of isolating individual strokes, um, like this one, for example, um, and stuff that I might want to use in the, uh, in the, final, the final thing. It doesn't have to be that precise, because I'm going to show you how to tweak these a bit in a second. So um, once I've got sort of some strokes isolated, I'm going to go into face select mode, grab an individual face, P, separate by selection, and just repeat this process for all the different strokes that I want. And then I'll just delete out the rest. Now I'll just spread these out a bit and work on one at a time. So uh, there's a bit of cleanup to do on this one. So I'll grab this in edit mode, Grab, go into edge mode, grab this uh, outer edge, double tap G, slide this in. We'll do the same for the other edges just to keep it nice and small. And then I'll set origin to geometry. I'll actually do that on all of these. And then, yeah, this one looks pretty good. So does this one, uh, this one. Uh, we need to actually pull this edge out, but with double tapping G, that doesn't work. So I need to hit C to undo the clamp and it'll allow me to go past that boundary now. And same for these other edges too. And here you can see we've got a bit of another one infringing, so I'm going to use a knife tool with K and just cut around it like that. And then hit enter, grab this face and delete faces. And this one, I don't know if I necessarily need this one actually, it might be a bit too patchy. So we'll just use these for now. And uh, all we need to do is basically make the white areas of these uh, images transparent. So I'm going to open up a shader editor on the right over here and disconnect these, this texture from both the inputs. Then I'm just going to plug the color into the alpha. You can see that this does the opposite of what we want. So I'm going to drop down a color ramp and use flip color ramp like that and pull the black value way down. Now I can go ahead and change the color of these strokes um, and I get this nice alpha from our painted texture. And we could add a bit more detail to these like bump and stuff, but honestly, I found it looked better without it. So now we have all these, I'm going to pop them into a collection by hitting M and moving them into a brushes collection. I can disable that now, add in an object that I'm going to be working on, like Suzanne. And actually I want to re-enable my brushes and click on one just so I can pin this material to the right here so that when these are turned off I still see this brushstroke material. Um, so the next step is to actually start putting these brush strokes on Suzanne. So first off, I'm going to smooth her out with Control 2 and Shade Smooth. And then I'm going to open up a separate uh, window here, set it to Geometry Nodes, add a new group to Suzanne, 
and then I'm going to drop down a distribute points on faces node because we're just going to be doing a basic scatter of these strokes. Uh, so like that, and we can turn the density way up. This is a useful parameter to have as well later down the line. And now we just want to basically copy our strokes onto the um, these points. So I'm going to instance on points, brushes, plug the instances in, separate, reset, and pick instance. So this means now that on each point, it will randomly pick a stroke from our collection and it's just set them all back to the origin. Um, so I'll just drag off this density and type in in to make it a group input. Now I have it in the modifier here. So we can do that with values as we go along to make this a bit nicer. Do the same with seed as well. Now to get the strokes to obviously follow the, the normals of Suzanne, follow the, the curvature, I'm going to plug rotation into rotation like so and now they align with where they've been placed. The only problem is it looks really ugly right now, and that's because of mostly shader stuff. So at first off, these strokes are actually gonna be casting shadows in cycles, and there's a couple other problems in cycles that we need to address. So if I switch this over to cycles on the GPU, go into rendered mode and turn off scene world so I can see this with a default HDR. First off, you can see that um, it's treating them as like real um, image planes where they're casting shadows and also we're getting these black areas where because basically we're overlapping a bunch of transparent um, textures we're running out of transparent depth so to increase that in the light path setting I'm going to increase transparent rays to 1024 which is the maximum now to uh, help with the shading I'm going to turn off the shadows for these in the shader by using a mix shader using a transparent and then using a light path and using is shadow ray in the factor and that will basically make it so that the shadows render as transparent. One more thing to help clean up the, the look of this a lot more is to cull the back faces. So to do this both in EV and cycles, I'm gonna drop down another mix shader, use a geometry node and use back facing as the factor and then transparent into the second input here. And you can see that helps massively clean up all these um, edges that we're seeing come from the other side of the mesh. Um, so that can be a really, really useful thing too. One more control you might want to add is just a final transparent mix, just to turn down the opacity of, of these strokes, if that's something that you'd like to do. I found it can look a bit, a bit nicer when you leave it a little bit transparent. So I'll leave it something like that. Um, but I'll go back into Eevee now because it's a bit quicker to work in. So things are looking quite good now. The only problem is um, things are quite messy, so we need to shrink wrap them back on. And I'd like a bit more control over some of these rotation and scale attributes. So to control the rotation, I'm gonna drop down a rotate rotation, uh, like so in here. Set this to local. And now if I change the Z, you can see we spin the strokes along their axes. So if I plug a random value into here, set X and Y to zero, I can now like choose how random I want the rotation to be on the Z, uh, which is kind of useful. So these could be a couple of parameters for you too, dragging those in. And the scale we can just randomize using a random value node and setting this to like 0.5 to one. And then we can multiply this by an overall scale factor to change the overall size of these, um, which is a really, really useful stylistic control. So I'll leave that up one for now, drag that in as a parameter too. Now the next step is going to be to wrap these strokes back onto the geometry of Suzanne so they follow the silhouette a bit better. And in, first of all, these are instances right now, so we won't be able to do that. So first we need to realize these into actual geometry. Now we can use a set position on them. And I'm going to set the position to the nearest position of Suzanne. So that's going to be our group input, sample nearest surface. I want to sample the nearest position, so I'll change that to a vector, name the value, plug in position. Set that in there, in the set position node. And now if I um, look at this, you can see the strokes are wrapped tightly around Suzanne, um, but they're very low res and getting stretched out a lot. So to solve this a bit, I'm going to use a subdivide mesh and just subdivide it like two or three times. And we get a much closer result now. Um, the only problem is, well, there's a couple of problems. One, it's perfectly wrapped around Suzanne, and the other one is all the strokes are overlapping, which is gonna cause some issues for us rendering potentially. So I'd like to offset them all a little bit. 
Let's address the um, the control uh, issue first of being able to ha break up the edges a bit more, not have it perfectly wrapped around. So in order to do this, I'm going to use a mix vector node here, and I'm going to mix in our original position. And now I can just use this as a slider to control how broken up I want the edges to be. So I like to leave it somewhere around 0.3, looks pretty good. Um, obviously zero would be fully shrink wrapped, which I don't really want. Now, in order to offset these away from the surface of Suzanne, I'm going to offset them along their normal. So let's use another set position, grab a normal node. And if I just plug that in, you can see everything sort of just inflates out, but I want it to inflate out differently per stroke. So in order to get a random value per stroke, um, I can't actually use a random value node. If I view this, you can see we get a random value per point because um, that's just how this ID works. We get a random value for every single vertex. We want a random value for each stroke as a whole. And our strokes are actually all detached, uh, so they classify as mesh islands. So we can use a mesh island node and use the island index as our ID. We get a random value per stroke now. It's going to be useful for the shader too, so I'll store this as an attribute called R. And now I want to essentially use this to scale the um, the offset here um, by a random amount. So I'll drop that as drop in a scale node and I'll drop in this random value node. Now you can see each stroke gets offset differently. Obviously we're just moving everything way too far. So I'm going to drop down another scale node, set it to 0.01, uh, maybe 0.02, but that seems to be working pretty well now to move all the strokes away from each other a little bit. Um, so this will help with any rendering artifacts that we might encounter. So that's like pretty much it for most of this, including the like the geometry side. But there's a couple more things we want to do in the shader of these strokes. So we can obviously set the color of these, but it's all one uniform color. So I'd like to randomize that by this random attribute that we created down here. So in the shader, I'll drop in an attribute node, reference that R attribute we made. And I'm going to overlay this. Actually, I'll run it through white noise so we get like a rainbow version of this. And I'm going to use a mix color and use this as the B input on an overlay. Now, if I plug this into the base color and view the output, I can change this A to change the overall color. And then this uh, will just break up the, the tones that you get in here with this nice sort of like random overlay that's happening. And you can control the strength of that with this factor value. You could also use the random value into the roughness of the shader, maybe through a color ramp to control the um, the lowest values. So maybe change the black from black to like 0.2 or something so we don't go too shiny. Um, but this could be a cool way to introduce some more variation in there. So as we add a light into our scene, and if I turn on scene lights up here, you can see if I turn this way up um, and I start playing around with these, these sort of roughness values up here that we're going to be changing the way that these strokes respond to light, um, which can be quite useful, whether you want it to be very diffuse like this or catch the light a bit more like this um, can be very nice controls to have. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Now, the only thing left to do is to sample a UV map so we can plug in textures and noise textures and all this sort of um, normal stuff you would do in a shader. And the difference with the strokes is that we're going to make it so that for every single stroke, we only apply one single value of the UV map to it so that when we apply a color to it using a texture, it will be one solid color for the whole stroke. We won't get any gradients across it and that will help with the painterly look. So we're going to do that in geometry nodes here and we're going to do it at the point where all these strokes are points because that is perfect for us because these will all have one value that the strokes will inherit. So let's store a named attribute here and we're going to store a vector called UV. And now um, we're going to essentially in the same way we transferred the position across from Suzanne, we're just going to transfer the UV map across. So I'll actually just copy these nodes, this um, group input sample nearest surface and I'll delete out the position. Now I want to sample instead a named attribute, the UV map of Suzanne. And this will depend on whatever you call this in the mesh panel over here, but most of the time it's just called UV map. So that will work here. You could go ahead and make this name and input so you could set it in the modifier too. So we'll plug that into our store named attribute 
and then disconnect the viewer and over in the shader drop down another attribute node called UV. If I view this now you'll see that we've copied across the UV map onto each stroke and you can see it every single stroke just has one single value applied to it, um, which is pretty nice. That means that we can now use this with an image texture or I'm just gonna demo it with a noise texture and I'll run it through a color ramp. I'm just using this as the vector of the noise texture. So I'll do something like this and maybe set my colors to be something a bit more interesting, like maybe a blue and purple, and then plug that in there. And now if we view the final output, we have our nice noise texture applied via our UV map. So yeah, that pretty much concludes this. Now you have this node group that you could call whatever you want. And basically uh, I'll have a lot of control over the, the painterly style. Of course, you could make your own painterly textures too for even more uniqueness to this. And you can go ahead and just like pretty much apply this to anything. It doesn't do too well with like super sharp corners. So if you're doing this on something like a cube, I'd recommend beveling it a few times first and then applying that GeoNodes group to it. You can see you get that, that lovely stroke uh, effect happening. You could also optionally join in the original object at the very end and you just have to make sure that you give that object like a material that uh, matches the color a little bit better. Um, so that it blends in a bit more. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty cool way of working. But that pretty much concludes it for this tutorial. So hopefully you've learned something cool about making painterly style effects in Blender. You're able to take this and create some cool renders out of it. Um, but other than that, that's going to be it. So I'll see you in the next one.